All right, welcome back as we continue on with our city council work session, which is also a joint uh, county work session. Um, we already had a tour of the prison and we called to order item one aboard the tour vehicle and item two um, I'm required to read this so I'll read you about the tour of the MSP site that pursuant to 610.020.4 of the revised statutes of Missouri this portion of the meeting is being held at a place that is not reasonably accessible to the public for good cause being that it is highly beneficial for council members to learn about and directly familiarize themselves with the condition and extent of the property that the city is in the process of acquiring this portion of the meeting will be devoted to fact finding of the council and no decision or votes of the council will be made during this portion of the meeting so we are glad to be back we've returned uh, a little bit longer than expected so thank you for your patience we had a great tour and why don't we start our slideshow at the beginning here I'm going to run through a kind of a quick virtual tour to point out where we were uh, on the site for those of you that could not be with us and um, and while we're here tonight I did want to point out we already called roll uh, aboard the bus we have all of our council members present but we also have uh, County Commissioner Jeff Helsher and Commissioner Chris Shepperly here so welcome glad to have you all here uh, they were on the tour as well along with State Rep Representative Mike Bernsketter so it's an honor to have all of you here and and appreciate it so um, especially um, Mr. Bernsketter all of the uh, work that you did for this bill in in the house and we greatly appreciate it so thank you for being here so we will run through um, the slides here and I know Clayton's in the back there so is this the first one okay and uh, this just shows some of the area in the upper yard and we can kind of flip through just so people can see we've had this running through while you all were in here earlier um, this is again in the upper yard area and uh, housing units this particular one uh, is Chestnut Street so you will see that uh, MSP Parkway on on the master plan as we look through it the proposed uh, road is this road here so this shows you it's a gravel portion um, of uh, Chestnut and the next slide there is the uh, state health lab so uh, that is one of the properties that's on there and then this shows if you look where that light pole is you can see uh, the penitentiary this is on the very eastern edge at the Lewis and Clark building or DNR building and next slide uh, this is coming back this is uh, coming back from Lafayette and straight ahead on the bottom right you can see the Lafayette interchange and so when you are at the corner of the prison you can see how close that Lafayette interchange is to allow access and open up access to the site and on the left you see the Convention and Visitors Bureau's office which also holds the new State Penitentiary Museum next slide um, and then this is coming in through the uh, parking lot this is part of the area to be acquired it's currently as you can see parking and then on the left is the historic area next slide um, this is coming up Lafayette Street on the right this is housing unit one this is what you typically see when you come down Lafayette next slide uh, and then the um, uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau um, and this is after you exit the upper yard the historic upper yard this is kind of the line of the area to be conveyed so when you see that on the map you'll know what we're talking about next slide and uh, we're kind of going backwards but this is as if you were going to the upper yard um, so it's kind of right on the edge of the property next slide and again kind of uh, coming from the river this is as if we had already gone down chestnut to the river uh, and you turn around on your right hand side is the river and you can see the train there and then behind you is the yellow house which is the shoe factory so when you see that on the map you'll know what we're talking about next slide um, and this is looking to your right this would be the river right behind the railroad tracks and uh, this is a view of the parking lot in the area to be acquired and this is the opening off of Chestnut Street that we drove through you can see the historic properties on the left so if we were to look on this map that is uh, Chestnut so the area to be acquired is Chestnut to the historic property on the east and west next slide and then on the north and south it would be Capitol Avenue to the river and this is a view of the river from Lafayette and that is MSP Parkway in the future it's the gravel road of Chestnut Street towards the river and that's in the upper yard 
and the Lewis and Clark office building. There are two state office buildings on the site, and we showed you the two. And uh, this is a view of the area to be acquired to the river. And then on the edge, this is the Lewis and Clark building. And this leads up to the upper yard. Next slide. Uh, and again, a shot from the upper yard. And more from the upper yard. This is the historic area. And more in the historic area. And the other housing units. And this is part of the area to be acquired to the east of those historic areas. And Lafayette with the federal courthouse on the right. And this is a view from the eastern edge looking at MSP. And to the very right, you can see the brick from the potato house. Somebody asked earlier where the potato house is. That is the underground potato house there, which is not on the area to be acquired. And Lafayette. And I think that should wrap it up just about more historic areas. So that is kind of a virtual tour of the area that we took. And I will be sure to blog all of these photos on mayorturgeon.blogspot tonight so that the public can see those. If they were not able to uh, come to the tour, they can see that. So um, what we'd like to do this evening is have a, an overview of the master plan. We're going to spend about uh, 10 minutes going over that. And then we're going to go over the legislation that we presented to the House and Senate and have an overview of that. So I'd like to invite to the podium um, Mayor John Landwehr, who uh, we appreciate his involvement. I know he was uh, mayor when a lot of this happened and was discussed uh, earlier. I'd also like to invite Councilman Schreiber, who um, is very involved in, in the tours and history. And we also have Mr. Randy Allen from the chamber here as well. So uh, if those three would like to come forward to the podium, and I believe Mark and John are go going to give us a presentation of just an overview of the master plan. So I will turn it over to you. Actually, probably the best person to do that would be Randy, since he was actually involved from the very beginning. John and I were on the first uh, the first uh, redevelopment commission, MSP redevelopment commission, um, which was uh, uh, a nine-person commission, three members in the chair uh, from the state, three members from the county of Cole, and three members from the city of Jefferson. So, uh, Randy, why don't you come up and start it off since uh, you were involved even before we got involved, so. Well, just, just briefly, uh, when Governor Carnahan decided that he wanted to replace the penitentiary because of it was aging and uh, the employee count was getting too high over there and so on, uh, we began the process of what do we do with the old facility. And so, as Mark said, a, a redevelopment commission was was uh, put into legislation along with the transfer of property to that. I believe that happened in 2002. Uh, I'm sorry, 1998. And uh, af after that point, uh, the commission did the work and developed with the consultant the master plan for redevelopment. So um, is that really what you wanted me to talk yeah. about? OK. Well, of course, uh, we're we're standing on the shoulders of um, of ten years of inaction right now. <laughs> the original game plan for the Prison Redevelopment Commission and the statute is still in place, where this commission was to take the process outside of the uh, outside of politics and have have a commission take title to the property and redevelop it. And for whatever reason, water under the bridge that did not occur. So here we are today. Uh, we have we have no active prison redevelopment commission. However, uh, we have an administration which uh, apparently is ready to uh, move forward, and we have uh, representatives who are willing to help us move forward. So um, we've uh, uh, we've not wasted ten years, but we've waited ten years, and we're kind of like the dog that caught the car. So what do we do now, right? That's the question. In front of you, you can see that you have a uh, history of the MSP development. And uh, whenever we said that, you know, in, in some ways it was a long process, a 10-year process, there was a lot going on and uh, with, the, with the commission 
and with uh, working with uh, Randy Allen initially and, and other people from the Office of Administration and from Facilities Management. And so there's a, a whole stack and a whole file of various drawings and uh, uh, formatted books with diagrams and information. One of the first things that we actually did is we had a charrette. And uh, charrette was, uh, we did it over at the Truman Building. It was one of the most in enjoyable things that I'd done in a long time. And there were various architects and individuals that came from all over, not just uh, around this area, but from other areas in the United States as well. And um, there actually were various teams that were put together. And these teams come up, came up with various design concepts that might be possible for the MSP property. And I, I can tell you, and I think John and Randy will agree, that those architects were, were very excited about the potential possibilities. Uh, they said that we had one of the most beautiful uh, vistas of a river, uh, basically unspoiled. Uh, one of the things that they, they told us to do uh, at that particular time, they said, uh, you know, whatever you do, don't put big high rises along that vista so that it's totally, totally ruined as far as the view that you have of the Missouri River. We also had an actual task force which was made up not just uh, members of the MSP Redevelopment Commission, but the task force was made up of citizens from around the city of Jefferson. And there were business leaders and some, some government leaders. Uh, there were private citizens, people that were involved in, uh, in various aspects of our community. And they also had input. And so one of the first things that was done is that we uh, actually did tours of the, of the uh, prison site. And determinations were made as to uh, what would make up the historic quadrant. And we actually did surveys. And we made a determination. We viewed every single vi building in the prison, uh, including all those buildings which, uh, which now no longer exist. And a determination was made as to the historic value of the buildings and the historic value of the property itself and an actual assessment. And so when the historic quadrant was finally developed, as you see it right now, that was the end result. Uh, we knew the whole prison was, was historical, the entire prison. And at one time, it consisted of 52 buildings and almost 2 million square foot of building space. But we knew that it would be absolutely impossible to shrink wrap the prison. Uh, that just wasn't possible. So we had to kind of pick and choose our, our uh, make a determination on which buildings would be the most historic. And those are the ones that have been retained and, and are still existing upon the property. The factory buildings, quite honestly, were just basically shells. All of the, all of the equipment we moved out to the new prison or it was surplus. So there was really nothing to see in any of the factory buildings. But you can see in front of you the, the timeline that was actually involved. Um, we still have a lot of those documents, if any of you would care to look at them. And we even got later on into issues like, well, what kind of park benches would you put there? What would you do with the lighting? What kind of historical lighting would you put inside the Missouri State Penitentiary? Um, what kinds of materials would you use? What type of water features might you have? And so it was broken down so that you had various sections and various quadrants throughout the entire site. Uh, that could possibly be used. And another thing that was done, and this was when Randy was uh, over at facilities management, uh, they did a lot of core studies, core sampling. Uh, that was actually done inside the wall and other places because we didn't know what kinds of materials might turn up from years ago whenever that site was used uh, uh, for various industrial purposes. And basically the site turned up very well. It turned up clean. So uh, that was a very positive thing. So those are some of the things that were done. It wasn't like that we just sat there and, and nothing was accomplished. We had uh, Parsons and Associates out of uh, St. Louis. We had some groups from Kansas City and different, different areas as well. And uh, they, were, they were very helpful in contributing to this process. So the, the, the great thing about the master plan is the master, master plan, I feel, is still applicable. Uh, the master plan has room, and it was intended from the very beginning, to be a plan that could be tweaked and changed so that it would fit in with whatever we felt the need might be uh, at whatever time we decided to uh, develop or the state decided to develop a property. 
And so when you go out later on, if you haven't already, uh, you can take a look at some of the some of the display boards out here on the easels, and those are some of the design concepts. And they're not, nothing's etched in stone there. But one thing is certain: we knew that the MSP Parkway at some point in time would have to be an important first piece in that puzzle because uh, any developer, whatever that might be in the future, or whoever does the development, they are actually going to have to have uh, uh, points of ingress and egress into the site. And so, uh, you know, I encourage you, uh, I've got a lot of that material, and I'll be glad to let you look at it or turn it over to the mayor or city administrator, and I'll be glad to let you look at it at any time. But it was a, a very involved uh, process and a, and a, and a very uh, much of a learning process. You know, certainly if there are any questions, you know, far as just uh, uh, chime in. Um, Mark talked about the uh, master plan, and uh, it did involve a lot of work. And the good news is a lot of the master plan is, is implemented. You have to kind of take credit for what we've already accomplished. Uh, the federal courthouse, uh, uh, I remember some meetings, and that uh, came very close to being in Columbia. That's hard to believe, but uh, the federal courthouse is here, and it's a it's a beautiful site. The architects for the federal courthouse specifically designed the federal courthouse to fit into that uh, prison redevelopment entrance. Um, the historic area was touch and go when uh, the state of Missouri was reluctant to make long-term commitments. You can put a big check mark by that because now there's, I think, a 15 year lease to the city of Jefferson, and there have been cooperative projects to ensure that the roofs are intact. And the CVB and Diane Gillespie's here, the success of the prison, of the historical quadrant, is uh, you can put a big check mark by that. Um, I want to step back a little bit. Uh, are, do, do we have a picture of the master plan or not? Are we are, are we going to go through the master will, plan? Carrie, yes. it's up to you what what the agenda is. I don't want to I don't want to get too philosophical sure, here. Sure, and we here. certainly can. It's on page um, twelve of this presentation. So if you want to pull that, Clayton can just keep flipping through till we find that, and that way it's on here. Uh, keep going. Yeah. One more. One more. There it is. So I think the idea of this proposed transfer at whatever time is that it does not involve the historic area. Of course, that's that's subject to that commitment uh, to preserve it. Uh, potentially down the road, make make portions of it available for a redevelopment. But right now, it's kind of on ice and subject to uh, the great work of the CVB. The um, the state of Missouri, uh, I, don't, I don't know if we're ever going to build another state office building in Jefferson City, but I hope we do. Uh, but uh, OA rightfully wants to make sure that they don't um, transfer land and yet uh, down the road, oh, we need a new state office building and where are we going to build it and we got to go buy land. So they very appropriately are saying, you know, we're going to hang on to some parcels. And so uh, that's, um, uh, that's to the east there, okay? Uh, so the area we're talking about uh, is the area that Governor Nixon, I remember the press conference or if the Capitol, everybody was popping the champagne corks. Uh, this is the area that was designated during the Nixon administration for private development. And so really what we're talking about here today is not some recent creation. It's really been on, on the table for a long time. Uh, any questions on that? Or any other comments, guys? We are very fortunate at this point in time to have such a great team from the community, to have Councilman Schreiber as part of our city council at this time that we're looking at prison redevelopment. What a wealth of knowledge and information. Same with you, uh, Randy Allen, being the chair of the chamber and having such great involvement from the master plan to your chamber background. We're very fortunate to have you. And uh, Mayor Landwehr, uh, I almost envision you sitting here in the seat. I don't. And it's almost like, you don't anymore. <laughs> but like, time has almost stood still. Like, all of a sudden, here we are, like almost what you had the conversation when you were mayor. And we're just picking up now almost where you left off. And uh, I, I, won't, I won't belabor the point. You all need to discuss, and, and if you have questions, obviously. But I, I feel like I need to leave you with, with a couple of thoughts. Um, 
this is not just a feel-good project. This, this is not, you know, I, I remember when we wanted to do a pedestrian bicycle access across the bridge. You know, there, some, sometimes you get a little heat because, well, why are we spending tax dollars on that, right? Well, I think that's a really great use of tax dollars, but this is not just a feel-good project. This, this is uh, a, a large volume of acres uh, in the central core of your city, of my city. And uh, we have to uh, we have to be uh, very careful with that, and we have to be guardians of it, and make sure that it just doesn't remain this vacant, dilapidated hulk, which is what it will remain if we don't proceed. Um, but I've mentioned some of the positive things that are already in place, the courthouse, the historic area. Um, it's a big project. It is bigger than any, it, it is bigger and more complicated, I would wager, than anything that a city council has uh, ever uh, encountered in terms of scope, in terms of complexity. It is big and it's complicated. I think, I think Randy would verify that and he may want to add his comments. I was talking to uh, a, real, a client, a uh, real estate developer uh, in St. Louis, and I had him take a look at it, and he said, oh my God, okay? So this is big and it's complicated. And so therefore, uh, I turned 65 this year, okay? So I get to give you advice, right? See, I'm an old guy. Um, be patient. Be patient. Uh, go slow, go slow. I know sometimes we want to just get it done. That doesn't mean don't do anything for five years, but be patient, go slow. Talk a lot. Talk a lot among yourselves. Have a lot of meetings. Have a lot of discussions. Keep all your key players involved. And finally, uh, get good advice. Uh, I might offend some people by this statement, but I'm going to say it anyway. There is nobody in this room tonight, and I don't think there's anybody at City Hall that has the expertise to guide you and advise you in this project. It's just too big. It's too big and it's too complicated. We have architects, we have attorneys, we have planners. Sorry guys, it's too big and too complicated. So I would urge you in the course of your patience and your, and your work on the project to bring on expertise of firms and persons that are used to projects of this scale. Uh, I think if you attempt to predict what will work, you stand the chance of being wrong. And uh, that would be a tragedy. There's expertise out there. There are firms and individuals who have dealt with projects of this scope. And I would encourage you to look to, look, look to them. And it's not me, by the way. I'm not trying to get hired. Uh, so uh, think about that. Those are sobering words. Hope I didn't offend anybody in the room, but I firmly believe that. Uh, questions or further comments? Does council have any comments? Our um, commissioners, Burns Getter, and we would prefer if you all would stay here so that as we go through it, questions that sure. may arise. And um, Councilman uh, Pr uh, Fitzwater? I said a question in regards to Union oh, one moment before Burns, uh, Representative Burnsketter leaves, I know you had a prior commitment. I hate to interrupt there, uh, Fitzwater, but That's did fine. you have anything you wanted to add? I know you were very, very much a champion of this bill, and so uh, we want to publicly thank you for your support. I'm not, I'm not 65, but I would be reiterate. And you, you can, so if you want to speak into the I'm mic, quite, too. I'm not quite 65, but I would reiterate what the mayor said to take your all's time on this project. And one thing that a lot of the members up at the House said was, uh, they were concerned that the state was going to turn the property over to the city and the city was going to make a lot of money off this property, which I don't think it's going to be a money-making project. But if there is some way of making money off this project, I would recommend that you all put the money back into the rest of the site, you know, develop more streets or more infrastructure or something. Um, you know, I don't know how we're going to develop the property, but... Uh, I would uh, caution you to not make money on it. But like I said, I don't think it's going to be a money-making project. But if some way there was, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend 
developing the site further, give it back to the state somehow, do something like that. But that yeah, I do have advice. to go. Appreciate that. That's what we currently do with the tour revenue. All the uh, tour revenue goes back into the site as well, so something similar to that. Any uh, questions for Representative Bernsketter before he has to go? And thank you for being here. Appreciate your support. And Councilman Fitzwater? Yeah, I, I just had a question. I assume Union, Union Pacific has an agreement with the state now. Would that be the same with the city, with their tracks cutting through the property? Yes, and that's something that I know we've worked with staff when we did the outline. I believe Mr. Marash, his department, as we um, had that right-of-way area that needed to be conveyed. And there's also some other portions, such as Lafayette. So do you have any comments on that? Of course, we have CMPS here, did a lot of the, the titling and whatnot. But I think there are some titling issues, it's fair to say, whether it's with uh, the state itself and or the railroad. All right, thank you. And um, on that note, too, uh, I, I'll go over this, um, what we presented to the House and Senate, and then we will also be followed by, we'll have a, a brief uh, presentation by Diane Gillespie to talk about tourism on the site, and then also Paul Sampson is here from, from Central Missouri Professional Services to give us a brief update. So um, before I get started, any other further questions or on the master plan or anything else? All right. And you all have in front of you this, um, what we presented for um, Senate Bill 486, which was passed by the House and Senate. Uh, if, you, if you don't have it, it is available online. And is it on our website, Phyllis, yet? Or, it w okay, this, this will be put on our website then. So, uh, but we do have it on the overhead so everybody in the room can see this. And um, as you look through the first page or two here, it does touch on a lot of the history that was brought up earlier. So um, that is something uh, important to share about when the task force was formed and some of the state offices that were built. And um, as you kind of look through this timeline, you'll, you'll see that it's something that uh, we've really waited for since 1836 when the prison was built. So the prison first opened in 1836 and uh, it's been vacant now for 13 years. So when we look at what's happened in 13 years, this is something really that our community has waited uh, for all that time, very patiently for. So um, you can see when the federal courthouse was completed, uh, before that when uh, the tours began in 2009 under a very successful uh, agreement with the state and the city. So all these things like, like uh, Mayor Lane were mentioned ha have gotten us to this point. So um, turning the page then to the, some of the activities, the concerts and venues, using the prison as an entertainment venue, we have on the screen our first ever concert inside the walls featuring Travis Tritt last year. It was very successful for a first time ever event that was held in the upper yard. And this year it will be Winona Judd on July 1st. So we're bringing a big name entertainment and using this as an entertainment venue. The Upper Yard, who would have ever dreamed that the Upper Yard is set up perfectly for entertainment? So that was definitely a, a big success for our community. Um, the next slide shows our tours, and Diane will touch on this, um, but the fact that if you look at the first line, tours have grown from 3,000 to over 33,000. So from 2009 to 2016, those numbers are exponential. Um, and also, uh, on the previous slide, it mentions how Alcatraz draws 1.3 million and how some of the others, Eastern State and Pennsylvania, Diane will touch on uh, some of the activities that they do there. And also knowing that we're the only city in the country that has a historic retired prison and a capital and a river and all of those things in close proximity, but we are the only city in the country that has those three things, so we're very well positioned. Um, the next page does show the MSP uh, the, if you look on the right hand side, the museum visitors. In just four years, visitors to the museum have gone from 752 to almost 7,000 visitors. So we're talking exponential growth in just four years. The reason they have jumped so exponentially was the move to the prison area. The uh, MSP Museum was moved from the corner of High and Jefferson over to the new offices of the CVB right there next to the prison. So you can see what that's done. And at the bottom, you can see a $3 million impact 
Um, and also it shows we've had visitors from 45 states and 43 countries just in the short amount of years uh, that the tours have been offered since 2009. And if you look there at the list of some of the outstanding area developments that we've had, the courthouse, which was very important, we cannot underestimate the Lafayette Street interchange that would not have been built if not for prison redevelopment. Of course, it's also opened access to Lincoln University and the entire east end of town has really been revitalized with uh, Lafayette Street interchange. But that was built um, with the vision of prison redevelopment and uh, Capitol Avenue redevelopment. There's some, su some substantial investments being made from the city at this time for Capitol Avenue. Um, we have streetscape improvements that are, this is in the design phase. Actually, it's in the construction phase now if you've gone down Capitol Avenue. And we're also working on um, the Capitol Avenue area, some of the houses, and working with the housing authority to revitalize that entire area. I mentioned the move of the CVB headquarters to the Marmaduke House and other um, entertainment venues such as the Avenue HQ and some others that were completed in 2015. And uh, we have uh, actually the proprietor of uh, both of them, Holly and, and Q are here, Quentin. We appreciate your investment in the area along with many others. And there's also been proposed lofts uh, in that area too for, uh, for future development. The next page shows the area proposed transfer in, in red so you can see the area on the site. This is as it looks today, where um, the area that's in the in the red area is mainly parking. You can see the remnants and outline of an old baseball field that once was on the site. And then the old shoe factory is the only building in the area of proposed conveyance. If you look in the middle of the site, there is the gas chamber, and that is proposed to stay where it is. So we would have an easement with the state. There would be no building, of course, done in that area. And the master plan also shows it on there. So that would be an area of easement. Um, Chestnut Street, as you can see the line in blue, that is a proposed um, MSP Parkway shown on the master plan. So we're showing an outline of where the potential road would go and eventually looping all the way over to connect with Lafayette Street in the future. Uh, but the historic quadrangle remains as it is, and the area in red is the proposed transfer, and then the area to the east would remain state-owned. The next slide just shows it um, a little more black and white, so you can clearly see the lines of conveyance, and then underneath in black and white it shows the master plan. Um, the next page gives you the acreage, so you can really see that out of this 128 acres, the city is asking for about 31.8 acres, and a lot of that is right of way, so really about 20 acres, 19.7, is the area for proposed development. The next page we looked at earlier, which is the MSP master plan, and there are proposed uses for that. As you can see, the building in the middle on the master plan was uh, proposed to be a conference center, perhaps a civic center. The other areas there were looked at to be hotels. If you look at the top of the page, there's a proposed marina. So uh, those areas are not labeled, as you can see. They're on the map, but there is some uh, flexibility. But we do want to adhere to what the state originally wanted in their master plan, but using it as a guide because some of those items uh, would need to be updated. But certainly that is what was originally on the master plan. And then you see the shoe factory, which we have in our area of conveyance as well. Uh, there was not residential plan in the original master plan, but with time, um, it's noted that that would be an, a, a good use to have a mixed use in this area. This also would open up future development for the state's uh, buildings as well as the MSP Parkway were to grow and expand. And not shown on the map, but at the very right-hand side of the page to the very east is Riverside Park. So there are parks and trails that lead right into the site. And there's a lot of opportunity for recreation and sports to be built into this. And also, when you think about riverfront development, this uh, area of land, you can start to see it there on the very left-hand side of the screen. That's the area of land that's known as Adrian's Island that runs all the way to the capital. So that actually ties in, if people want to know how large that piece of land in, it starts at the capital and ends up at the prison. So there's even proposed river access there in the future. The last page shows uh, potential uses for the redevelopment, hotels, entertainment, dining, retail, housing, lofts, apartments, and office space. So we really foresee this as um, an area of, of wonderful mixed uses. So that was the presentation 
kind of in a nutshell that was given to the House and Senate. They both voted to approve. So at this time for Senate Bill 486, we are awaiting the governor's signature. And the city is in discussions with the Office of Administration on what the MOU would look like, that memorandum of, memorandum of understanding, and getting some of the um, details worked out to include things such as a timeline and other uh, details. But in general, what you see here is what, what would be included. So uh, with that, I would like to ask Diane Gillespie to come to the podium. And uh, while she's coming up, are there any questions of council up to this point? Um, all right, we'll have Diane if you want to touch on um, sure. the tourism aspect. Sure, thank you for the invite. Um, as Mayor mentioned earlier, we started the tours in 2009, and at that time, the agreement that um, the CBB had or the city had with the state was based on a nine year time period. So we would get the use for April, for March through November, and sometimes it was November or December of that year as to whether we would have tours for the following year. So for marketing purposes and going out and selling the tours made it very difficult. Well, when 2013 came around and we had the problems with MSP, we had a partnership between the city and the state that did come together and did the repair work at MSP. But in included in that, we were able to secure a 15-year use agreement. So that was huge for us to be able to move forward with our marketing and the booking of that facility. So then you really kind of saw the numbers continue to grow. The numbers are continuing to grow. As part of that use agreement, any net profit that we make off the tours, the money has to go back into projects of preservation at MSP. So for 2016, we spent over $100,000 on preservation work. Um, so as we move through this year, we'll be looking at what projects need to be worked. Um, included in that, we had new lights put into Housing Unit 4. We repaired the column on Housing Unit 3 and did some other repair works around there. So those will continue to go as we move forward. Uh, we also, out of those profits, we do pay for all of our operational expenses over there. Um, that include, we do pay our tour guides, which make us unique in that our tour guides are former um, people that have worked at MSP. So they have the history, but they also have their own personal stories, which make the tours unique. Uh, we also have the other operational insurance um, expenses are running. We pay for the heating um, and that type of um, expenses over there. So one other topic that the mayor did touch on was Eastern State Penitentiary. So if you guys want to go in and do some looking around, check that site out. It's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, and it's kind of one of those sites that we kind of use as our guidelines. Uh, we kind of look at what's going on there, how do we compare with, with their pricing and the events that they do there. The biggest event that they have there is that they have a big haunted house. Um, event that starts in September and runs through the end of October. They also do some corporate events and parties and their museum is actually housed right there on the prison grounds. So next uh, in July I'm going to be out in that area so I do plan to go there and actually do a site visit of that prison and kind of see what's going on there and kind of see where we fit into it. So after that I'd be glad to come back and report to you as to my findings at that site. So any questions from our side of it? questions for Diane well okay. we appreciate what you do for sure. the city that Thank raises you. a lot of revenue and tourism and appreciate you taking such good care and having such a great relationship with the city and the state to make those tours happen and that exponential growth is just really incredible um, on our CVB Commission the uh, Councilman Mahalovich is our liaison mm -hmm as well so yes, yes. Works very closely and, with that. and we do have a good working relationship with OA um, you know anytime that we have a situation happening over there we had water in housing unit one when we had all those rains about a month ago um, and therefore we knew that we had the roofs repaired there so we did reach out to OA and they had them come out and repair those last week so you know we are in constant communication with OA so I think that gives OA kind of a feel for what our relationship working relationship is as we move forward with any other projects and that's something else to note you're doing these tours with very little infrastructure if people hopefully you've been on a tour if you haven't I encourage you Please to go let me know um, but uh, looking at possible redevelopment will help to bring some infrastructure Absolutely. to the site. There is not running water. They use portable yeah. toilets, so yeah. it's not. Yeah, you know, you look at the next level that we can go with that site, and let's face it, guys, we have porta potties. 
and to be able to have wedding receptions there to have corporate events you got porta potties so you know and and we kind of looked at what our alternative is um, but waiting to see where the development goes and if we can tag on to that do we build a separate site that just has the restroom facilities we do not have any running water um, you know the electrical is kind of iffy uh, in some of the buildings so to be able to kind of step it up those are things that we would need to take to take a look at as we move forward with um, with the revenue that we do gen generate and you did say wedding receptions and if you look at Eastern State they do weddings there mm -hmm. and you would have thought but and we have they do so it many calls yes. <laughs> we have so many calls that want to do wedding receptions we've had proposals at the gas chamber go figure you know so Anybody's um, looking for any yeah ideas I mean, to help come on. It's, it, it's out there and people are definitely interested in, in the site we have a lot of travel writers that come in and view it and we have a lot of film inquiries so who would have thought who would have yes. thought exactly Yes, and I think that kind of summarizes everything about this site. Who would have thought this mm -hmm. area that's kind of been hidden away all these years and suddenly is coming back to life right. in the way that it is now, and right. that many thousands of people are paying Absolutely. to see it. So yep. thank you, hey, Mrs. Thank you. Gillespie. And I'd also like to invite Mr. Paul Sampson from Central Missouri Professional Services. Uh, as you know, the City Council last fall uh, unanimously supported a bill to begin preliminary engineering on the site which was definitely a, a great investment so that we could get ahead of of this process and know that once we did get approval of this from the state we would be able to uh, begin some some construction and work quicker than waiting to do the engineering later so I believe that was October when that bill uh, yeah was I was resolution. just looking through the file folder as I was sitting over there and that was in October of uh, of last year that the uh, preliminary engineering contract was signed with us um, since that time we've been spending a lot of time uh, helping uh, city staff and uh, folks over at the legislature and getting all the documentation that they need in order to put the conveyance bills together uh, writing legal descriptions um, so we know exactly you know when, when the conveyance goes into a piece of legislation whatever description is in that legislation is what gets conveyed so we did uh, quite a bit of work on, on getting a legal description for that uh, property uh, uh, written out uh, a lot of it includes um, some housekeeping issues that have kind of been floating around for for several years um, some of the right-of-way on Lafayette Street extension is still currently owned by the state so that would clean up uh, that piece of right-of-way uh, councilman Fitzwater had asked about the Union Pacific right-of-way um, according to our deed research uh, Union Pacific doesn't hold title to the property where their railroad track sits that there's actually an easement um, which is a little bit unusual Union Pacific also owns a couple of small tracks within the prison property itself so at some point we're gonna have to do some horse trading I think in order to help clean up some of those title issues um, we've also been uh, we did a uh, aerial topography survey and aerial photography um, of the MSP property uh, so we've got uh, updated uh, topographical information and, and things like that to, to start working on the preliminary designs on and then we've taken a, at least an initial look at some of the grades of the streets and um, you know what how the streets will interact with the adjacent buildings especially between uh, the shoe factory and, and housing unit 5 where the MSP Parkway would come in off of Lafayette Street so we've done just a, a little bit of initial work on that we've been kind of sitting back uh, the last few months waiting to see how the conveyance bill works out before we get uh, too far uh, uh, diving too far into the into the design work but um, you know that looks like it's starting to uh, come towards its finality hopefully then we'll uh, proceed farther on that Great. Well, I'll leave you at the podium here as we start some discussion and some um, questions, and we may have some of the other presenters come up as well, because that, that's most of our, our presentation. And um, we mentioned that you did a lot of the surveying for the, the bill. It's Senate Bill 486, so if anybody wanted to you know, reference that, and you'll see, I think most of it is just simply pages of, of the place on the map where the, the land is. And it's pretty simple. It just talks about... Um, having the uh, portion of the land conveyed to the city of Jefferson and that those terms would be worked out um, with the uh, Office of Administration the Commissioner of Administration which is what you're helping us work on and to put it very simply um, in exchange for conveyance the uh, the agreement is that the city would would 
begin to build the road known as MSP Parkway on the master plan. And that would be a joint city and county partnership that would be built using, it could be used uh, sales tax, uh, joint sales tax funds that we uh, have slated for economic development. So it'd be a great economic development project. I know it's very common um, in some big projects like this where the city would, would look at building a road into an area for future development. And this, as we've learned tonight, would be a great area for future development. So that's where the uh, city county partnership would come in. So to put it very simply, in exchange for conveyance of the land between the city and the state, that uh, the city and county would move forward and help to, to build the road. And then that would help to spur the development. So there will be other details, of course. I'm putting it very simply. Um, and then those are things that as we get into future meetings, we'll discuss um, your um, preliminary engineering, MSP Parkway, those kind of details. And right, one thing I might mention, um, as far as the time frame and, and schedule on the conveyance bills, uh, and we've done a couple of these uh, where we've had to go through the legislature to, legislature to get a conveyance. Um, assuming that the governor signs the bill, the, the legislation doesn't actually take in effect until the end of August. Once that legislation takes effect, it takes some time for Office of Administration to actually uh, do the paperwork and, and come up with a, an agreement with the city on the kind of the fine points of, of, uh, of how the conveyance will take place. And then, you know, so it could be as late as September or October, probably, I'm guessing, on when the city would actually get a deed for the property. And then council then would start to also have discussions along with the county and, and other partners as we talked about the CVB, the chamber, city and state, as we begin to look at um, a master developer that would look at the site as a whole and bring in the expertise like Mayor Lanmore mentioned that would be needed to uh, move forward with some future development of the site. And, and something else is that is key is using the master plan as a guide and that that would still remain in effect as, as a guide for this. And, I do also want to make sure that, that we thank Senator Kehoe for his support of Senate Bill 486. I know he worked very hard on, on the support and moving that forward, and we would certainly not be here if it wasn't for, for his efforts. And we also had our state rep, Mike Bernsketter, and also Jay Barnes, State Representative Barnes, and State Representative Fitzwater. Uh, they were also involved, Fitzwater and um, uh, Burnsketter were co-sponsors of the bill in the House, and Jay Barnes also was very vocally supportive when it was debated on the floor. So to say all of that, um, it's a very exciting time for us as a city, for us to be seated here as council members, as members of the commission, and just to be a part of this to, to see where it is now. I know there's some skepticism naturally in sometimes when we talk about this topic, just because we've always tried to make progress, it's been 13 years vacant. And we've had a lot of small wins along the way, like our tours and other things, but we've, we've never been as far as we are now. We've never had the success of having a bill for conveyance pass the House and Senate and just to be awaiting the governor's signature now. So what an exciting time for all of us to be working on this great project. So, um, you know, the point of tonight was to kind of give an overview for us and also uh, it's been recorded so that the public can also view um, where we are with prison redevelopment and where we're going. And uh, as we wrap it up, I would uh, we'll open it up to questions of council or comments. And we have our experts here in the room as well that would be happy to come up and answer. And, I just our, have and the commissioners as well to join in. Councilman Graham? I just have uh, one question. I know you talked about the uh, MSP Parkway. And in the community, I've heard several different numbers. Do we have an estimated cost on the, on the parkway? I've heard anywhere from $2 million to $8 million, And certainly that is a wide range so sure do we have an estimated cost on that it is a range and we know that we have in our uh, joint city county sales tax the number that uh, we would estimate would be around two million to be spent and uh, as you could see on msp parkway it, it's it can be quite vast on the map so it depends if you're talking you know a certain portion or the entire part and and a lot of that would probably make more sense for future development as was mentioned earlier there is no state development on part of the site but in the future certainly it would be uh, something that would be looked at to be phased in and I would expect that our um, Central Missouri professional services may give us some phases I think that's what you're looking at now is kind of giving us different phased in um, numbers and information yeah at this point um, 
you know, a lot of the property where the uh, street would go, um, MSP Parkway, Chestnut Street exp extension, and then all the way up to the, the DNR Green Building and, and uh, back over by the uh, International Shoe Factory, you know, that, that, those were the, the main corridors of roadways um, that are going to be constructed. Um, you know, the kind of the, the devil's in the details, I think, as we start with the negotiations with the state on, on the conveyance bill as to, you know, what they expect to be constructed, um, what the, the size and scope of those roads are. Um, the, the master plan, I, I, if I remember right, envisioned a kind of a boulevard type road, I think it's similar to what's in front of Coles and, and Stone Ridge Parkway in that area. Um, different groups that have, have met and discussed it over the years. I don't think anybody really believes that that's the, the scope of the road that would go through there. So I think there's a, and I think that's the reason for the kind of the, the wide range in, in numbers that are thrown around is that we really don't know the details of what we're talking about yet. So until those details kind of get ironed out, we'll, um, you know, we've just kind of got that range in there, so. But certainly the two million joint city county uh, funds would certainly get what we need to begin the development and, and to entice developers and get the road uh, mm -hmm. the road started into that area. So is that two million from city, two million from county, or is it a million a piece? It's a it's a million a piece. It would be the joint the yeah. joint economic development has two million in it. Okay. Commissioner <coughs> Shepherdly. So, Paul, are we talking about just the roads, or are we talking about all the utilities and everything else that would go in to support the development? I mean, obviously, uh, the, the utilities are, are going to be a big piece of that. Um, typically, on, on a large-scale development like that, whenever there's a, a imminent use, the utility companies will do a lot of the extensions um, at no cost, anticipating that additional future revenue. Um, again, I think you know, once a, once a developer is selected and there's a plan on, you know, exactly where the, exactly where the road would be and, and exactly what kind of services need to be provided for those specific sites, I think we can get into a little bit more detail on that. Councilman Fitzwater. You said a question. I assume you've done some preliminary look at the site. Any surprises to date or any areas that look like they may be bigger problem areas than what was anticipated so far you know I don't I don't think so um, really the 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 biggest challenge I see and, and it's uh, it's really just because of the of a tight corridor is between housing unit 5 and the shoe factory um, the MSP Parkway basically will come off of the end of the Lafayette Street cul-de-sac and then go east between those two buildings um, and I don't remember exactly what the distance is but it's a it's a fairly narrow corridor between those so I think just a little bit of care has to be taken on making sure that those buildings are, still have access and, and are usable to the greatest extent possible while that road kind of bisects the two. Um, I, if I remember from the master plan, housing unit five is really not, is anticipated more to be accessed off of the historic side of the prison to the south of housing unit five, whereas the shoe factory would be accessed either off of MSP Parkway or even off to the north um, on the lower yard side. Would would that cul-de-sac be rebuilt then? Whenever we, and CMPS actually did the design on the uh, Lafayette Street extension for the federal courthouse, um, where the master plan showed the that uh, cul-de-sac, I think where the cul-de-sac is now is probably 100 to 150 feet short of what the what the master plan envisioned. And if you look at the topography of that, I mean, it's it's pretty evident why. Um, I think once we get onto it, it would be extremely costly in order to try to extend that another 100 to 150 feet um, where the master plan envisioned it. So I see that as one of those locations where there'll be a potentially a slight deviation from, from what was in the plan. But I think we would try to use the existing cul-de-sac as much as possible. And that's shown somewhat on the map where MSP Parkway was thought of versus what's in reality because the master plan was, was done really almost you know before the street was built too, so there's some variation. But like you said, you've come up with some preliminary ideas and thoughts of how that can be addressed. Mm -hmm. 
that would also work without having to reconstruct the cul-de-sac. Councilman Mahalovich. So my understanding is that the conveyance of the property, uh, given the governor's si signature, is uh, contingent on our investment in this parkway. I don't know that it's so much a contingent upon, but that's the anticipation that the state has is that if the city gets the property, that the city is not just going to sit on it and let it sit there for another 13 years that the city plans to move forward and, and bring development to the project. Um, I don't think the state probably cares one way or the other who builds the road, whether it's the state or whether it's the city, county, or a private developer. Um, that's just part, you know, that's part of their master plan and, and they, they expect that to be done. Um, I don't think that they, they will specifically say we're going to give you this in exchange for X number of dollars to build the road. Uh so the the engineering work we uh, assigned to you um, you're going to yield what at the end you're going to give us a plan for how much this this parkway is going to cost right correct okay and if we i mean we anticipate that uh, as we uh, you know as the city gets the uh, gets the deed for the property and um, starts to look for developers that the the roadway design and development will design will kind of happen simultaneously and um, make sure everything works together. More questions or comments, discussion? Um, and then I know we have oh, Council, or Commissioner Shepherdly. <clears throat> Does the parkway have to go in like it's shown on the master plan or it, would it be possible for it to deviate depending on the developer that comes in to develop the property? I think that it, it would be able to be deviated from. Um, I think the, as long as the intent is, is maintained as far as a connection from Lafayette Street and a connection to Chestnut and a potential future extension to the DNR Green Building. I think as long as those three pieces are maintained and whatever design come is, is brought forward, um, I think that would be a, a suitable to the state. And, one thing I might mention is that as we go through this design process, um, you know, it's our intention to keep Office of Administration, you know, make them a partner in this process as well. Um, you know, once the city gets the deed for the property, it's not our intent to uh, shut out the OA since it's not on their property anymore, but we want them to be a, a partner in the process. And since they do uh, still maintain the majority of the property on the property. <coughs> And it wouldn't necessarily be one and the other, like two separate things, having a developer and, and building the road. Those things may be happening likely close to the same time where there could be some, uh, you know, involvement from the developer as well as, as this is happening. Because we look at as soon as we would get the conveyance that the ball has already started rolling by having the preliminary engineering so that we, we should be able to act in a manner that would allow uh, some input and, and the timeline hopefully would be moving it at a rapid pace to where we could actually get I mean I, we want to take it slow and take our time but also keep it moving mm -hmm. so that we could find those pieces to work uh, together and we also have city staff here I know they've worked uh, the departments from city staff have worked on this as well Mr. Sanders Mr. Marash so if there's you know anything to add and if any of our presenters tonight thought of anything else you know to add to the discussion tonight um, and it's great to have members of the public here as well. Um, so hopefully being on the site was helpful for council. We've never done that before, but this is unlike any other project we've done before. So it was nice to actually get out and see it. Uh, I know a lot of us might've had tours there, but when you start thinking of looking at a map and actually visualizing where this is and what it is in proximity to and how it all interconnects, the historic portion the portion that we would like to see conveyed to the city and then the state's future area of growth uh, and then the park area at the end and the river kind of how all of those areas fit in together is good to see it and it really uh, gets you uh, you know realizing what the potential is um, so there will be a lot more meetings to come in the future so uh, any closing comments remarks questions um, i also want to thank our our county commissioners for being here um, 
and Commissioner Bushman had planned to come here. He had uh, something came up. He was not able to attend at the last minute. Otherwise, we appreciate the support of our three commissioners. And we heard from Shepherdly, um, Mr. Helsher. Do you have anything to add tonight? Okay. Thank you for being here. And yes. I'd like for uh, the two commissioners and the council members, I've got a handout for you with my thanks to Diane Gillespie who assisted me with it. So I've got something I want you to have before you leave. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Schreiber, and for being our tour guide and really the tour guide to the community as well. So um, we hope for uh, the governor's approval as we get close to that, and we'll certainly keep council and the commission and the community apprised of the uh, future exciting developments for prison redevelopment. Very excited to be here talking about it tonight and have a work session to um, begin that discussion. So uh, at this point, we'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Um, any further discussion? Okay, before they leave, you've been called out for a picture. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Thank you.